let's talk about food stamps. Officially known as SNAP, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program offers food assistance to millions of eligible low-income individuals and families. It's like a safety net for hunger. According to the USDA, in 2016, SNAP provided 44.2 million Americans with an average of $125 a month each in food assistance and cost taxpayers $66.5 billion. While SNAP is a necessity in hard times, there is a need for reform regarding which commodities SNAP households buy, specifically soft drinks and junk food, and SNAP users purchase billions of dollars worth each year. According to a USDA report, in 2011, SNAP households spent $357.7 million on soft drinks per month. That's nearly $4.3 billion for the year. That includes more than $3 billion in soda. $1.1 billion was spent on bagged candy. And that doesn't include the individual candy that's normally located at the checkout. SNAP users spent $455 million on the sweet stuff. $938 million was spent on cookies. And over a billion dollars in ice cream. All subsidized by the U.S. taxpayer. Obviously, SNAP recipients make unhealthy food choices, and the USDA knows this. And so do some members of Congress. In February 2017, the House Agriculture Committee had a public hearing discussing the pros and cons of restricting SNAP purchases. When you look at how SNAP recipients, the kind of food they buy, it's really not different from the food that are people that are not on SNAP. That's mostly true. According to the USDA, SNAP recipients spend 23 cents out of every dollar on less healthy foods such as soft drinks, candy, cakes, cookies, and salty snacks. Non-SNAP households spend 20 cents per dollar on these items. But the obvious difference is that non-SNAP recipients are using their own money, while SNAP recipients are using taxpayer funds. All of us in the United States do a bad job of, of deciding what to eat. <laughs> it's no laughing matter, Congressman Peterson. America has some big health issues. According to the CDC, Healthcare costs related to obesity total $147 billion a year, and the total estimated cost of diagnosed diabetes is $245 billion. We could all use some guidance probably, but um, I'm not sure the government is the, uh, the way to provide that. If you don't think that the government's job is to provide guidance, then why spend over $400 million a year on SNAP-Ed, a program that provides healthier food choice guidance to SNAP recipients. For a program with a stated goal of improving nutrition, accepting such a large percentage of spending on be beverages with no nutritional value seems counterintuitive and likely undermines public support for the program. I couldn't have said it better myself, Dr. Rashidi. Politics aside, I think that we can all agree that this is a nonpartisan public health issue. I googled Donald Trump's eating habits, um, and it's not a pretty picture. Um, Domino's Pizza, Kentucky Fried Chicken, McDonald's, Diet Cokes. I mean, maybe we ought to begin with a pilot project that li limits access to, to unhealthy foods at the White House because we all pay for that. The taxpayers pay for that. Oh, here we go. Typical grandstanding. However, this idiot doesn't realize that the president and his family are billed for every meal that they eat in the White House. And if Trump is paying for all of his meals, let him eat what he wants. Sodas, candy, sweet things, that's not what makes us obese. No, 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 food doesn't make you fat. Don't blame the food. What did food ever do to you? Our children and us, we don't, we don't go and exercise. We don't have physical education in the schools anymore. But what we have is this Blackberry. Uh, did I go back in time? This is 2017, right? This Facebook, this going on the internet. They go in the basement or they go in their room and they stay hour after hour on that. So they go into the basement and spend hours looking at Facebook on their Blackberries. Got it. That's Democrat David Scott, by the way. He's the congressman from Atlanta, Georgia, 
the city where the Coca-Cola company just happens to be headquartered. And I'm sure the campaign contributions from Coca-Cola, Dean Foods, and the United Food and Commercial Workers Union has no bearing on his clearly biased opinion. How do you define a, a you know a, a sweetened beverage? I mean, does cranberry juice fall into that category? I mean, there's lots of nutritional benefits to cranberry juice, uh, but you know there's a it's, it's a sweetened beverage. No, cranberry juice is a natural fruit juice, you dummy. Can someone vote this guy out of office, please? This is Leslie Saracen from the Food Marketing Institute. Watch her play dumb about what constitutes sweetened beverages. Um. I think we uh, end up on a slippery slope when we start talking about sweet beverages um, because I don't know what that means and, and I think, you know, like most things, the devil's in the details because when we start talking about sweetened beverages, are we talk? I mean, I don't know what exactly we're talking about. I mean, there are juices that bring lots of nutrition that are sweetened beverages. No, she's not that stupid. She's just trying to make it look like it would be a huge burden to grocery stores to differentiate between food categories when it's not. And unsurprisingly, the Food Marketing Institute contributed money to Congressman Peterson, Scott, and McGovern. I know, you're shocked. And then there's Congressman Doug LaMalfa, a guy that cannot be fucking bought by Big Grocery. So we're today talking about the SNAP program, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Supplemental meaning in addition to what might be someone's personal income or other forms of aid a family might be receiving. Nutrition, generally thought of something that is good for the body, making you healthier, stronger. Assistance, the idea that someone else is probably paying for this to, to help people. Ms. Saracen and Dr. Schansenbach from the Brookings Institute claim that administering any change would cost way too much money. Do we have great estimates of how much it'll cost? You know, maybe five billion a year, something like that. I think the administrative costs associated with making these determinations in the context of USDA would be astronomical. But Dr. Rashidi from the American Enterprise Institute is confused. I, when I hear um, the discussion about how it would, the, the cost would be astronomical, I don't quite understand how that could be with items, for example, like sweetened beverages that are very straightforward. So we have supercomputers could probably program this in at the register and not make it that tough, right? Exactly. And we talked to retailers in New York City, and there's other, been other retailers that we've talked to through other efforts that have uh, said exactly what you said. They already restrict alcoholic beverages, for example, um, non-food products, and this would just be one more thing to add to the list. Is it really that much tougher to differentiate between soda pop and uh, tobacco? Well, I think the challenge is in how you're de defining soda pop or how you're defining nutrition, or how you're defining a healthy product. You know, we've had well, a lot shouldn't of- Shouldn't we try, because we're having all this effort made in recent years over fighting obesity and kind of differentiating uh, between what things are contributing to obesity and what are not? Well, I think we've had testimony this morning that has provided the evidence that doing so is going to be going to be at great cost. Great cost to the people that are the assistance part of this program. It's also a great cost to the people that are, for lack of maybe knowledge or the idea that the government is incentivizing it, sending them home with candy bars and soda pop. In a two-hour hearing, LaMalfa is just one of two people on the committee that sees through this lobbying bullshit. The other is Congressman John Faso. Would any of the witnesses contend to me that soda, sweetened uh, soda, has nutritional value? When I see six billion dollars, perhaps three billion, of taxpayer dollars being spent on soda, which has no nutritional value, in a program that's called Supplemental Nutrition Assistance, something is wrong. Now, the Trump administration wants to cut the SNAP program by as much as 30% over the next decade, but it's unlikely that cuts that large will ever be approved by Congress. And while some legislators have tried to introduce food stamp reform, they've been met with scorn from the media and disinterest from their fellow lawmakers, likely because of corporate donors or fear of alienating voters in poor districts. The fact is that right now, the federal government is subsidizing junk food and soda with taxpayer money it's an incredible waste of funds that are supposed to be helping feed America's poorest, 
but ultimately it adds billions of dollars each year in healthcare costs and millions of pounds to a growing obesity problem. As always, thank you for watching and tell me what you think about the issue in the comments. And while you're at it, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.